Hello and welcome. Uh, today my name is Phil Jennings and with me is Carter Buswell and we will be a part of your Kinsey service product support team. Our goal today is to put a pump mount on a tractor. Uh, a lot of planters anymore are coming with PTO pumps to reduce that hydraulic load on your tractor and the Kinsey planter comes fully equipped with that pump and control systems but the interface to get it hooked to your tractor is something that comes as a separate piece of the puzzle. So today in front of us we have all the parts from an Ag Power Systems pump mount and we're going to hook this John Deere 8335R to the Kinsey 3665 machine. Guys, the PTO pump mount is pretty universal, meaning we can use it for gear pumps, what they call a Series 3. Uh, Ag Power Systems has a Series 4 that has some additional features to carry the larger variable displacement uh, piston pumps that are found on our 47 and, and 4900 series planters. So regardless of your model or size or series of pump, realize that the video that we have today is intended to be pretty universal and we'll show you the basic steps to get the pump installed and aligned and, and ready to go to the field. So with that, I'll turn it over to Carter and we'll start looking at the identification of the parts in the kit. Yeah, thank you, Phil. So as Phil said, I'm just gonna do a quick overview of some of the parts that are gonna come in the kit. Um, this is a Series 3 um, Ag Power Systems kit. This is gonna be for a Kinsey gear pump that's gonna, you're gonna find on these 3665 True Speed planters. Um, uh, so the first thing we have here is our lift handle. Um, and then we're gonna move over to our tractor specific um, mounting plate. And again, this is tractor uh, specific. This is the one piece that is not gonna be universal or the one of the pieces that is not gonna be universal for these kits. This is gonna be specific to whatever tractor you're running on. Uh, next, we have our torque plate. And again, guys, this is going to be uh, specific to the tractor based on the height between the drawbar and the PTO shaft itself. Um, uh, the next thing we have here is our bearing housing. And coming back around to the torque plate here, we also have these spacers, um, these rubber isolator spacers, and our actual um, steel hardware spacers as well. Uh, everything else is just hardware. Uh, the kit does provide you with 5% um, Molly grease. Uh, that we'll go into a little bit further in depth on here in a little bit. Um, for this kit, we're going to need a 15 16 wrench and socket, as well as a 3 quarter wrench and socket. Um, and you will also need a wrench to remove the tractor bolts for the draw bar so you can install this uh, mounting plate. And for this tractor, we're going to be using a 30 millimeter wrench and socket. So I think uh, now we'll move into the actual installation of this pump mount. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to remove these tractor drawbar bolts uh, using our 30 millimeter socket for this tractor. After we have those bolts removed, we can go ahead and install our tractor specific mounting plate. Now this plate should have two bolt holes that line up exactly with the bolt holes for those bolts you just removed from the draw bar. Now guys, we want to make sure that we are actually using bolted on hardware and um, not just pins on some of our smaller Cat 3 hitches. We've seen guys that try to use the pins that are installed there instead of hardware or actual um, bolted on hardware. It is important to make sure that that plate is bolted on there as tight as can be so it's not vibrating and causing issues with the pump. Alright guys, now that we've got that tractor specific mount plate bolted tight to the drawbar and once again as Carter mentioned if your category three hitch may have pins rather than bolts through there, you will have to find bolts that'll, that'll secure that plate. We can't have any movement in that plate. So next we've got to get all of this put together. We've got a convenience handle to put on the bearing and then we're going to get the pump mounted to it. Okay, the pump side already has the pump bolts 
thread it into it. Uh, it gives us some orientation. But you'll notice three bolts, what I'm going to call the bottom side, and two bolts at the top. Another quick thing to note, Phil, is that the top can always be seen by where the sticker is. So wherever the caution sticker is, that is the top of the pump mount. Okay, so our half inch bolts and flat washers over our slotted holes. Lock nuts, we'll get the handle on. Okay, now that's the pump side, our tractor side, okay? As before we put all of this together, guys, we're going to want to make sure that our splined shaft is clean, and then we're going to lubricate it with the special grease that comes in the kit, okay? So we're going to want to make sure that we clean the splines out, and if there's anything in there, you may need a wire brush to, to make sure that everything is clean from the splines. And this one's new out of the box, but it never hurts to check and make sure you've got the splines clean on your, on your uh, pump adapter side as well. So next year when you pull it out and get it ready to use, have the pump on and off here, make sure that those splines are, splines are clean. You gotta take, make sure to take these bolts out before you try and mount the pump up to the housing as well. We've got our molly on our pump shaft and on our bearing. Now we can slide the two together and install these bolts back into the pump. And we're going to want to make sure that these are nice and snug on there. Nice thing about this design is that everything's going to be self-aligning into the bearing housing. Uh, the bearing housing itself is set up at the right size to interface with the pump so everything centers up. And then that bearing's going to float in there to keep things aligned. All right. So here's our pump assembly. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to make sure that our splines are clean and well lubricated with our 5% molly grease uh, on the PTO and on the pump mount. Now that we've got that shaft uh, nice and clean. We're going to want to make sure that we are using our 5% molly grease on that shaft and on the mating coupler of the bearing housing as well. Now it's important to remember to put this molly grease on there and it's important to remember to use the actually supplied grease as that molly content will act as a dry lubricant if that grease does work itself out during use. So now that we've got our grease and our shafts nice and clean, uh, we can go ahead and install the, the pump and the pump housing onto the PTO shaft. Okay, now that Carter's got the pump on the tractor, uh, we are going to want to make doubly sure that there's no contact between that bearing housing and the tractor itself. So make sure that there's clearance around the back side of this. Uh, there's actually no locking mechanism on this to the PTO shaft like we're used to with a regular shaft itself. Uh, instead, the torque plate's going to hold and support everything in position, not only the weight of the pump, but it's going to support it from any movement on that PTO shaft. So what does that is, is our torque plate. Guys, we've got um, all of the bushings here, and there's a couple of different washers. I think it's important 
to see how this goes together. All right, so the bottom of this stack is gonna be the heavy, the thick washer. And then you'll have your bottom isolator. This is gonna go inside that torque plate, your top isolator, and then your top, what I'll call the standard fender washer. Okay, that's your stack up. Now the bolt is gonna go through that stack up from the bottom of your tractor plate up through, making sure that our flat washer is hitting the slotted part of the hole. All right, so with that, we can put our thick washers on there. I've got an isolator in here. Carter, you got yours? All right. And get our bolt started. The second isolator, our heavy flat. So now that we've got this torque plate uh, loosely fitted up there, now we're gonna install our three grade eight half inch bolts uh, that mount the torque plate to the bearing housing onto the PTO pump mount. And it's important to note that we're not gonna tighten these either. Uh, we're just putting these on there to make sure that it's held in place correctly. So now that we have our three half inch grade eight bolts installed, mounting the torque plate to the bearing housing, now we can go ahead and tighten our five eighths bolts uh, and holding those isolation rings on. Guys, what we wanna do here, now that we've got all the bolts loosely in position, is we want to take a little bit of weight off this pump, okay? Right now, all the weight of the pump and the hoses and everything is, is hanging down on the assembly. So if you look, you can see there's quite a bit of movement here. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna bring the pump into a neutral position to take the weight off and the load off of the PTO shaft of the tractor and let it float on that bearing housing. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the weight off and Carter can go ahead and tighten our three grade eight bolts up. And because they're a little tight to get after here, uh, using a lifting device like a uh, two before here just eases it up a little bit so you got plenty of time to get things tight. Once that first one's in place, you come out of there and that pump nice neutral position we can tighten the other two bolts up so now that the pump is completely installed we've got the load lifted we're neutral on our PTO shaft everything's in place we can give it a test run we can spin that PTO make sure everything runs smooth and we'll, we'll then be ready to back up and drop the hitch pin in PTO's running. You can see guys, pretty simple, self-aligning, very smooth operation. Uh, it's gonna be important for the planting season to make sure that, that pump's nice and, nice and smooth. I think Carter said it best when we fired up the PTO shaft, if everything is done correctly, there should be really nothing to see. Uh, that interface between the tractor and the planter is extremely important. It's an area that uh, oftentimes doesn't get the attention that deserves. There's a lot, of, a lot of motion, a lot of things happening. And then by the time we get the remainder of our hydraulic hoses, our electrical connections, guys, it's, it's a pretty important place. This pump mount at the end of the season, there, there is some maintenance. There are some things that we want to, to take a look at. Uh, it's really an easy two bolt removal, okay? Uh, yes, we started with a brand new package and we assembled everything, uh, but depending on how we want to do it, there is location on the planter to store the pump. 
so we can take the two half inch bolts off and just take the pump itself and store it to the planter if we want to. Guys, we can take the two isolation bolts out and we can take the whole pump assembly and the mount and everything off of the tractor. So depending on what your preference is, it really doesn't matter. What does matter is that we keep things clean. Okay, we, we talked about importance of cleanliness on both sides of that shaft, the PTO side, the pump side, and the use of that uh, molly grease. Guys, every year it should be cleaned and re-greased. Make sure that that stays easy to service, easy on and off. Uh, Going to make a difference in the long haul. Yep. With that, I think we also want to say thank you to our uh, friends out here at Blue Equipment that uh, let us use the shop today. Uh, we've got customer tractor in the Weijin family. Thank you very much. And uh, it's hopefully going to be helpful to make it quick and easy to get your planters hooked up because uh, the time is, time is coming soon. Yep. So thank you very much.